Wow, what a pleasure it is to be here. Thank you for that very, very warm welcome. It feels to me like the Atlantic just got a little bit narrower. And that's because I always feel at home when I come here. Now, since my last visit to CPAC, I've been engaged in a new fight, a new battle, and it's one that we all need to be aware of. We know that the walk woke corporate culture is keen on cancelling people. And this includes our banking system. And so in June of last year, I got a letter from my bank, and despite the fact I'd been with them for 43 years, I got a letter from the bank saying, we are closing your accounts. And I thought, well, I'm not very happy about this, but it won't be a problem, because I'll just go and get another bank account only to be refused a bank account by 10 other banks. I'm beginning to think, well, maybe these people are doing their best to close me down, to force me out of the country. And I managed to get a copy of the internal documents as to why they'd made this decision. They said that I did not align with their values because I dared to question net zero. I dared to think leaving the European Union was a good thing. I dared to question globalism. But they wrote in their notes, don't worry, he won't go public on this. <laughs> because he'll be too embarrassed to do so. Well, I tell you what, folks, they picked on the wrong bloke, didn't they? <laughs> so fight back I did, and fight back hard. I managed to get two chief executive officers sacked. The share price of Britain's biggest bank fell by 35%. And we have promises from government that legislation will change. But you see, I was fortunate in the sense that I'm big enough and ugly enough and I've got a voice and I was able to defend myself. But there are so many others out there who don't have that voice, but who find themselves being discriminated against by a system, a corporate system that is now in bed with globalist left-wing politics. And I was fighting this not just for me, I was fighting this for hundreds of thousands of other Britons who've been closed down by the banks. And of course, that's relevant here too. Donald Trump just the other week spoke about the scourge of debanking, only to be met on Saturday Night Live which I'm sure is a very favourite programme of CPAC attendees. And some idiot on Saturday Night Live says, what is debanking? Does it really exist? So we find on the other side denial at everything we try to expose and raise. But I am hopeful, I'm optimistic, that we can get that pendulum to swing back. Because still, in all of our countries, there is a majority for common sense. We might not see that common sense if we watch CNN or read the New York Times or listen to many on Capitol Hill, but it's the same in every country. You get outside the capital cities and you find a clear, solid majority for common sense. But <clears throat> that shift will not happen on its own. It will only happen if we, in the populist movement, make it happen by getting people to vote for our candidates in numbers that we've never seen before. And we can do this, and we will do this, and however downhearted you get, never ever forget that in the end, right through the history of mankind, and it may take time, but in the end, good always triumphs over evil. <laughs> Hold that thought. Now, for me, for me, CPAC has become an annual pilgrimage. And I love coming. But boy, how CPAC has changed. 
When I first came here a decade ago, I was the only foreign-born speaker on the platform, the only non-American on the platform. And look at it today. Quite extraordinary. I've met delegates here, elected officials from Hungary, from Poland, from Romania, Australia, Canada, Colombia, Mexico, and I'm going to get this wrong because I'm bound to forget somebody, France and Germany, and right across the world. And the international summit that preceded this event had representatives from over 20 countries. We've even got the president of Argentina coming to CPAC tomorrow. And, and what an amazing guy he's proving to be, isn't he? Standing up for the right values, daring to cut government spending, daring to cut back on the public sector, encouraging investment opportunity. And it's a very, very tough journey that he's on. But already, already the financial markets are saying, do you know what? The Millet experiment may just work. And we hope and pray that for him, for those of us that believe in capitalism, and for the people of Argentina, we hope and pray he can turn that once great country around. <laughs> so for me, for me to be here, suddenly, I'm not alone. CPAC has become an international movement. The globalists, by trying to take away our national sovereignty, trying to take away our national democracy, and ultimately try to take away our individual freedoms and liberties, have forced us all together into this new movement in the most remarkable way. And it is, it is the most amazing testament to Matt, Mercedes Schlapp, the CPAC team, that it's through, it's through these meetings here, it's through the energy and enthusiasm of CPAC that this new international movement has come together. We all want the same things. We want international cooperation. We want trade. We want peace. We want common sense. But we want it within the framework of the nation state, not within the framework of the European Union or the United Nations or the increasingly appalling World Health Organization. No, thank you. We don't want their international treaties. So we've come together in this remarkable way. And for me, it's all really rather heartening because I'm going to make a boast now. I was the first populist. I was the first one doing it. Indeed, 30 years ago, literally to the day, 30 years ago, I was out on the streets campaigning in my first ever election campaign. And I've kept going for 30 years. So people talk to me about the Tea Party. Well, compared to my longevity in this, they're just a bunch of teenage kids. So I've been doing this forever. And I was completely alone in British politics. I was completely and utterly alone inside the European Parliament, which was an experience that I enjoyed very much more than they did <laughs> in the years that I was there. And I was certainly in the United Kingdom completely and utterly on my own in thinking back in 2016 that not only was Donald Trump a very good candidate for the Republican Party, but I also predicted that he would win that election in 2016. And I'm very pleased that I did. And I've been an unwavering supporter of his ever since that day. But I might have had a few problems with banking, but just look what they're doing to him. Look at that judgment in New York last week. A private contract between a commercial company and the banks. A sum of money borrowed, a sum of money repaid with interest. No one lost any money. No one was defrauded. And yet somehow, the utterly corrupted and politicised judicial system in parts of this country finds him three 
350 million dollars. I can't think, I honestly can't think of a more absurd or obscene court judgment that I've ever seen in my life. And, these are, and this is just the beginning of many battles that he faces over the course of the next few months. You know, corrupt regimes, undemocratic countries, they either try to bankrupt or imprison their political opponents. And in the case of the Biden regime, they are trying to do both to Donald Trump, and that is why he needs from all of us our absolute total commitment and our unwavering support for him as a man. Unwavering support. He is... I and mean, I know what it's like. I know what it's like to be demonised. I know what it's like to be called all the names under the sun. But I can tell you he's been through a lot more of it than I have. And simply, folks, I believe that Donald Trump is the bravest man that I have ever met in my life. I really do. I really, really do. So now it's not just me in the European Parliament. There are new parties right across the continent. We've got European elections happening on the 9th of June this year that's going to see many, many more people coming in that want to fight the globalist agenda. And it's not just me from the United Kingdom thinking Trump needs to win this election and needs to win this election not just for America, but frankly, for the Western world and perhaps even saving the very elements of our Western civilization that we hold dear, and we do. No, not just me, we've now got two former Conservative Prime Ministers, including Liz Truss, who was here, Boris Johnson as well, saying they want Trump to win the election. So on issue after issue, on issue after issue, I used to be, what we say in English slang, I used to be Billy No Mates. I was literally on my own. I was some kind of weird outsider. And now I find those things that I fought for for 30 years are becoming mainstream and becoming popular. And that is good. That is good. And I look ahead. I look ahead to the election that will take place this year in America. And whilst I still have some reservations about the way in which the electoral system has been cleaned up state by state, and I still have some concerns about that, I'm still in no doubt that on November the 5th, we're going to get Donald Trump back elected and in the White House. It's going to happen, isn't it? It's going to happen, isn't it? Good. Because that's what we need, belief, confidence, courage. But it can't happen soon enough. I mentioned a moment ago Western civilization. What is Western civilization? If we think about what's been built in the case of my country for more than a thousand years, what's been built, what's been improved upon, what's been defended by, countries, by the country literally going to war, what we've been defending are the basic concepts of the family of the nation. And what we all have to understand is the fundamental underpinning of everything that we call Western civilization is our Judeo-Christian culture. That is at the heart of who we are, of what we are. And this week in London, we've seen the consequences of forgetting that. The consequences of not having the moral courage to stand up and defend that. Whilst you've been here at CPAC and on your way here, we have seen the most disgraceful and disgusting scenes in London. Thousands of people in Parliament Square waving Palestinian flags. Chants in Parliament Square and on marches through our cities that call for the destruction of Israel and, frankly, the people within it. And the low point this week, I think, was the image being put onto Big Ben, which read, from the river to the sea, 
Palestine shall be free. That went on Big Ben. That, that was calling for the destruction of the Jewish people. And there hasn't been a single arrest. Just imagine the equivalent here, that somebody flashed that image onto your White House. Think how you would feel. And now we see British politicians cowed, scared. They were even scared to leave the building on Wednesday and Thursday evenings because we've forgotten who we are, we've forgotten what we are, and we've allowed an extremist fringe to bully us and threaten our very democracy. And that is why we need strong leaders. It's why we need leaders of conviction. It's why you in America and we in the world need Trump back in that White House to return some common sense. But let me say this to you. Please, don't just come along to CPAC to listen to the great guy tomorrow. And he'll be his usual self. He'll be larger than life. He'll say things that enrage the left-wing press. He'll be funny. He'll be terrific. You know he will. He'll be terrific because he loves you, the grassroots movement in this country. But coming along to CPAC, enjoying the event, going to the cocktail parties, in fact, the way I'm feeling today, the endless cocktail parties <laughs> that happen in the evening, agreeing isn't enough. Coming together with friends, meeting new friends, it isn't enough. If you really want this to work, and I want it to work here, because it is our Western civilization that we need to start standing up and defending. For this to happen, it needs you to commit to doing more than that. You folks have got to get your walking boots on or maybe golden sneakers. So please, I urge you, if you want the same things that we want, this election here in America affects all of us. It affects the safety of the world, as for the first time since 1945, a possibility of World War III looks real. We only get the right things in life. Peace only comes through strength. Trump can deliver it. Please do your all to go out, work hard, donate, put your walking boots on, deliver your leaflets. Let's get this man back in the White House and let's get common sense back into the Western world. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.